with the release of Five Nights at Freddy's 3 drawing in. Scott persists in his ability to keep our taste buds tingling with more incredible and fascinating teasers. With the drop of the most recent Five Nights at Freddy's 3 trailer, we were introduced to a new animatronic and also various environments bearing similarities to establishments we already know, which in turn has led to much speculation. We as a community must regard all current available information at our grasps and continue to piece together the exceptionally large puzzle that is the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise. Today, we will be covering the top 10 theories on the new animatronic and environment introduced in Five Nights at Freddy's 3. Please ensure you like this video if you do enjoy, and also subscribe for more upcoming content coming real soon. Don't forget to also comment any of your thoughts below. Theory 10. What is the animatronic? The most obvious question many have begun to ponder over is what the animatronic exactly is. Judging by its appearance, it appears to share continuous traits with some of the other animatronics we know from Five Nights at Freddy's 1 and 2. However, some of the more obvious features, such as its distinctive ears, are similar to that of the animatronic Bonnie. Could this mean that specific animatronics persist primarily in its build over others? Theory 9. Where is Foxy? Foxy has become a mascot known for his malicious and swift abilities. However, in no portion of the teaser do we actually see Foxy. There does, however, exist images which feature Foxy, but in a different form altogether. Vibrant lights shine from within his facial details, projecting light into the surrounding halls. Whilst Foxy doesn't directly appear to be an animatronic, his features, and also soul, looks to have remained. Theory 8. The Mystery of the Arcade Room During one of the shots shown in the new teaser, the camera pans down a darkened and gloomy hall, showing another room that exists at the other side of the hall. With consideration to specific pizzeria details such as the stars and also camera position, we can know this hallway to be that of the East Hall within Five Nights at Freddy's 1. We have never seen the hallway from this perspective, which in turn means we have only discovered the existence of this arcade area now. Is it possible that this arcade is perhaps the source of the random music we frequently hear in Five Nights at Freddy's 1? Theory 7 the time era of Five Nights at Freddy's 3. The Five Nights at Freddy's 3 teaser trailer shows a little of each pizzeria. This leads to the question, when is Five Nights at Freddy's 3 set? With knowledge to the style of writing Scott addresses within each of the title sequences that appear on screen, we can be led to believe this is a sequel. This could mean that we are in fact witnessing flashbacks of the various pizzerias, which in turn showcases important information we have missed, and also tells us that this new animatronic has existed in all of the pizzerias all along. Theory 6. Bonnie is linked to the purple guy, a theory many look past, but some observed. The new animatronic appears to have many facial details, which are similar to Bonnie. In the newest Five Nights at Freddy's 3 teaser, it is made apparent that Bonnie seems to hold key potency in terms of importance within the Five Nights at Freddy's 3 plot, within some form or another. Based upon Bonnie's colour, and also what we know of the purple guy, there could well possibly be a blatant connection between the two we've all looked past. As bizarre as this theory sounds, anything currently stands. Theory 5. Who is he? A remark emphasised within the newest teaser. The definition of he is as follows. He, used to refer to a man, boy or male animal previously mentioned or easily identified. From this, we can gather that Scott is referring to an individual person or animatronic. To further the exploration of this statement, we must first understand which of the key antagonists remain. With knowledge to this new animatronic being the primary protagonist, can we assume he refers to him, or a deeper force we are seeing in a different form? Theory 4. What can we use? This statement was appended to an image posted on scottgames.com showing a box of animatronics. In an in-depth analytical video, I covered over the concepts that this phrase was constructed in such a way that it represents a conversational style. Based on Five Nights at Freddy's 3's plot, we can confirm this was in fact the case. We can also now prove the concept that this was quite possibly there to represent the spoken dialogue before the build of this new and fascinating animatronic commenced. Theory 3. This new animatronic is golden. A high quality image was released that showcased the new animatronic in the foreground amidst a gradient based background followed by a clear 3. When looking at the material that coats this new animatronic, we can see clear reflections and refractions occurring amidst its components. If we had to recognise this to be a definite golden material, we as a community have bared witness to a brand new golden animatronic. 
Theory 2. The connection between Bonnie and the animatronic. With careful observation to the events that occur throughout the teaser's airtime, we can confirm that there is a distinctive correlation toward the new animatronic and Bonnie. But how? Throughout the trailer, we see many posters of Bonnie scattered through the Five Nights at Freddy's pizzeria on the walls, and he appears to be the most prevalent character. The more important segment of information, however, is the smooth pan we see on the Five Nights at Freddy's stage. As the camera pans, we can see the animatronics in a dormant state. That is, until Bonnie slowly averts her eyes toward the camera and looks directly into it. Now I ask, why is it that ironically, Bonnie appears to be a purposefully made dominant character, and also the new animatronic possesses the head of Bonnie. Theory 1. We know who he truly is. This theory inherits the idea of a previously created video by myself discussing the in-depth theory of why the marionette is the cause of everything. With notice to the fifth theory, we understand that the usage of he can represent something previously mentioned or easily identifiable. At one shot during the sequence whereby we see the new animatronic twitching uncontrollably, the shot seemingly ends on its eye. We see the deep white circles within its eyes, which can most certainly be linked to the marionette's appearance. From the game's synopsis, we read as follows. At first, there were only empty shells, a hand, a hook, an old paper plate doll, but then a remarkable discovery was made. We have never seen this animatronic before, so there is a high possibility this is not the he that Scott refers to, the marionette, however, has been established in every working title through extensive hints. We as a community have recognised the marionette to be a primary driving factor for the animatronics and their behaviour. Another driving force is the shape of the animatronic's body. He is distinctively taller than all the other animatronics with thinner arms and legs. During the sequence whereby the camera zooms into the animatronic's upper torso and head, we can see a thin neck and also a very rounded head, similar to that of the marionette. With observation to the posters on the wall, we can gather that all of these animatronics still exist. We can see their dismembered components within a box. We see the marionette posted upon the wall peering through the slightly uplifted gift box, yet no marionette is within sight. So now, we will oppose the question to you, as a community. Where could the marionette be? Thank you for watching our latest video. If you enjoyed the content, be sure to show your appreciation by liking the video. To stay up to date with all upcoming content, be sure to subscribe 